Self-censorship is neither inherently bad, nor is it inherently good. And one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is, is what Adam Smith had to tell us about this. Adam Smith is an 18th century moral philosopher. Most people know him for the wealth of nations, but uh, I think that his work uh, from the theory of moral sentiments is really helpful in this and helping us to figure out when it is appropriate and when it is not appropriate to engage in self-censorship. Think, for example, of uh, you're in a live exchange with um, a conversation partner. There's, you're in front of an audience and your conversation partner starts acting like an arrogant jerk, right? What do you do, right? We, our first impulse might be to sort of mirror that behavior, to, um, to kind of jump in and start being an arrogant jerk back, right? But if we're, um, you know, kind of wise to the ways of the world, you know, we tend to say maybe that's not the right thing to do, right? And what we're doing here is we're engaging what Smith called the impartial spectator. And we start to view our own conduct through, not through our own eyes, which is, tends to be partial, we tend to be too forgiving of ourselves, but uh, through the eyes of somebody else. And the really wise scholar is not going to, or the really wise person in this conversation, is not going to just look at uh, our conduct from the vantage point of our conversation partner, who's being such an arrogant jerk. We're going to be looking at our conduct from the standpoint of the audience. Um, if it's in an academic setting, it would be that general academic audience. And we would imagine ourselves switching places with them, right? And then looking at our, our perspective conduct, kind of doing the gut check. Is, my, is what I'm about to say um, appropriate? Is it proper? Is it in alignment with what's expected of me as a, a student or as a scholar? And that helps us by switching, by imagining that we're switching places, that helps us to uh, uh, kind of find the uh, right thing to do, right? Which is to say, I want to continue to be in alignment with what's expected within the general academic public. But also, it, it helps us to muster up the restraint uh, to dampen down our emotions. And this is what Smith called self-command, right? Um, so those are, that's, that's one thing that we need to recognize is that in that moment, we are engaging in a form of, of self-censorship there. We're, we're censoring, we're dampening down what would have been our immediate response. That's a good thing. This is really important. I mean, Smith's entire theory of how we are able to live in a world where we are governed by moral principles depends on us being, being able to align our conduct with what's expected in society generally. So this is really, really important. But let's imagine a, a different scenario, right, where you're again uh, in an exchange with a, a fellow scholar or a classmate and there are onlookers, right? And this time, uh, you're getting challenged in ways that are really confrontational, not just by your conversation partner, but by the, the whole audience, the whole classroom. Uh, perhaps the Twitter sphere is lighting up with condemnation of you and your position, right? What do you do in that case, right? And that's a time where, again, Smith understood that the clamor, he called it the clamor and vehemence of public opinion, may be so strong that you start to, you know, say, even the seasoned scholar might say, you know, I, I want to take a pause here because I'm, I'm worried that my impartial spectator may be off, off kilter a little bit, right? So I'm going to pause. I'm going to think really hard about what's being said there, right? But if after considering it carefully, if if I really am uh, aiming at truth seeking in this case, if I'm doing, if I'm really aiming at doing that which is praiseworthy and not simply chasing praise itself, then if I'm going to then make my argument at that point after I've had that sort of thoughtful deliberation, then it's then it's this, then it's something that the impartial spectator will approve of, even if there's a lot of clamor and vehemence from the crowd, I can trust that impartial judge, right, uh, who's looking at my behavior and saying, no, you were sincerely aiming at truth. You think that you're advancing the conversation in a way that is going to expand knowledge, um, and you're doing it in a way that's um, uh, in, in, in keeping with civility, then you have pleased me, says the impartial spectator. But here's the thing, you don't just arrive 
on to um, the stage of academic discourse or the arena of public discourse fully formed in this way. It takes a lot of practice to get there. And Smith called this, um, the enga by engaging in the bustle of the business of the world, we acquire that self-command that we need to adhere to what is proper, to um, be sure to um, do whatever is possible to, to do that which is praiseworthy and not simply chasing praise. And so that to me suggests that we need to be really thoughtful about developing in our students, with our colleagues, in ourselves, that sense of self-command that allows us to take a breath, right? really assess whether or not uh, what we're about to say is in alignment with or in, in uh, opposition to what would be expected of any civil scholar right, who's uh, out there in the world, whether it's a student or whether it's a professor. Uh, but then when we decide that, no, this is what we should be doing because I am sincerely moving forward with an argument that I believe is going to expand truth, from there we need to summon that courage to do the right thing, which in that case would be to speak up. And that takes reps. It's like, a, it's like an athlete, right? Um, that it, an accomplished athlete drills so many times, they get that sort of muscle memory where when it's really difficult to do something in the moment of the big game day, it feels actually pretty easy to do because they've done it so many times before. And so similarly, we need to become practiced in exercising this, this skill of switching places and really assessing our conduct from the vantage point, sometimes of the general public, but also sometimes from that, that impartial, well-informed judge that is going to give us an honest assessment of our conduct, despite what the clamor and vehemence of the crowd might say. Thank you.